This episode is brought to you by Let's Productions. Follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn. See you there. My name is Terry Lynch. I'm with Oregon Ecology. Um, I found myself searching for a passageway one day. And that passageway leads right across the complete section of the Cascades, which I'm sitting in front of at the moment. On top of my feet. I want to make sure that everybody sees the type of things that we find in the process of research in the world. I have located a couple that's sitting here on the top of the line of peak. She's facing south. Hmm, she's facing north. The middle. Cascadia Guides. A Let's Production. In conjunction with Alien Strand Films. Everybody. Welcome to this episode of Cast. I'm your host, Donald Desma, and welcome to today's show. So we ran a little bit behind. Um, it was just an accident. We were having some technical difficulties. You know how things are in the in the technology world. Some things just don't work correctly. So we got it going. Um, thank you guys for being here today. You know, um, you can find us, Alien Strand Platform, uh, on 26 platforms, okay? So you can find us on uh, iHeartRadio, Spotify, you know, all those good ones, uh, Amazon. Uh, you can catch us on Amazon Music now. So you can even ask Alexa, and Alexa will play you some Alien Strand podcast. So just an FYI, you know... Um, you can actually visit alienstrand.com. Uh, you can uh, our our website is up. Uh, you can visit uh, asdp-ufo.com as well. So you know we are part of Alien Strand Disclosure Project. Um, you know, and we look at the ticker down there. You can see everything that uh, that we're trying to do here at Alien Strand. You know, um, it, it's just a big family, a big community that we're trying to put everything together. Uh, today's going to be an amazing, amazing show. Um, you know, because we have a special guest on today. Her name is Marisol, and we're going to get her on here shortly. Uh, but I just want you guys to um, just kind of remember of, of what we're doing here today and, and where it all starts, right? So, you know, we, of course, we have our film, The Middle, that I hope mostly everybody has watched. And I hope you have watched it. It's still on Amazon Prime for two ninety nine. No commercials, right? You can still find it on uh, Tubi TV and all those good ones, you know, uh, for free. These are going to be free as well. Uh, and don't forget to give us a thumbs up there as well. You know, after you watch the movie, that helps a lot, you know, to kind of get it circulating, right? You know, because we put a lot of hard work into it. And that's it's not just a uh, documentary, but it's just something that you guys have to understand uh, of what you're seeing up in the sky you know a lot of people don't really understand what it helps you uh, it actually helps you you know try to figure out how to do this right and this is what terry lynch does and then of course our great find that we found on top of polina peak up there uh, that terry lynch found and we were able to document every single thing that was up there right so thank you guys for watching that i really appreciate that you know uh that's one big thing that that uh we, we're here and getting the information we are now on 17 platforms so be ready it's going to be popping up everywhere all over different countries we're on five countries right now so as far as the film now we're going to have uh 
We started filming the middle part two. We got 90% of that done. Okay. Uh, just kind of remember that uh, we did that a, about a few weeks ago and it's not wrapped up yet, but we're going to get that out to you guys as soon as possible. This is going to be a really good documentary. Um, it's going to be a little dark, but it's going to show you the, the things that happen to folks, you know, after they, they uh, encounter uh, an alien or extraterrestrial, even a sighting at that, you know, because that's where it all starts, right? Remember I talked about it starts from the very beginning and this is where it starts. So I hope you guys understand that uh, what this next film is going to be. It's going to be it's going to be dark, but it's going to be good. Uh, so everybody can get a grab a grasp on exactly what's happening to these folks. Um, now tonight's podcast um, is number ninety three. Uh, the Star People are, are the aliens or demons, right? And we're going to be talking to Miss Marisol, um, you know, because. She has a lot of information about what happened to her. Uh, if you guys want to chime in on this podcast, you know, uh, you're, you guys will be on there. You know, I'll put your names up there. You know, your, your names will come up on screen. You can ask questions as we go through this podcast. Uh, and remember, you know, keep an open mind because this is exactly what, what it is. Is You need to have an open mind, you know, to just – just to see the experiences that she went through. And, and that's what we're going to exactly what we're going to talk about today. So, Oh, and don't forget what happened yesterday was they made history, you know, uh, um, with the UAP in Congress when they had that meeting, um, you know, with David Grush, you know, Ryan Graves, and then uh, David Fravor, you know, give those guys out an applause, you know, because they, they actually made history yesterday. So, you know, if you have a chance, go back and look at that, um, uh, a live stream if you can. I know it's not live anymore, but you can check that out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get Miss Marisol in now, okay? Hello, everyone. Thank hey. you for having me, finally. <laughs> right on. We finally got you on the show. Yay! <laughs> hey. Uh, you know, we had a little difficult, technical difficulties, but it was okay. It's all right. We got you back on. <laughs> uh, so um, now... For people that don't know who you are, you are part of ASDP representative as well. Uh, so you represent Florida mm-hmm. and uh, uh, because you do have a lot of activity over there. Um, and we today we're going to talk about you and, and uh, things that happened um, to you as a young child. And I want people to understand and just kind of keep an open mind and, and be patient and, and, and know where you're coming from uh, um up here and in your heart as well, because that's where it all counts, right? Um, so, can you kind of just give us a little rundown from the very beginning? Um, from where the very beginning, um, yep. I'm from Connecticut. I was born and raised in Connecticut, and um, my first recollection was I was three years old. I went to bed with my sister, and um, I felt the blanket moving off of me. Mind you, I thought that that it was my sister, you know, but she she wasn't doing it. She was sleeping. So I told her, please stop. And I realized it wasn't her. It happened again. But this time, just a little faster. And um, so I sat up and I grabbed the blanket from the floor and I felt something touch my hand. And when I looked, it was a little blue baby, uh, a blue child like myself, um, it didn't look like an alien as far as the big eyes or anything. It literally looked like a human blue child. Right. The head was a little larger. Um, it had hair on it. I'm not a great artist, but the eyes, it's because I didn't have the right paint, but the eyes kind of looked like the night. Um, oh, wow. Wow. But it, 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 it was a child. Um, there was about two to three of them would come. Um, But what happened after that, um, I put the blanket back on myself and I laid on my tummy and I covered myself from head to toe. And I'm giggling under there, you know, wondering what's going to happen next. And um, I'm being levitated. Wow. I'm being levitated and these little beings um, take me through our apartment. I see my dad and my mom sleeping together and my brother and my other little brother. Um, and then it brings me back. And I, as, I'm, as, as, as I'm floating back, I'm floating towards the window. And I get a little scared. Um, I'm, I, I say to myself, I'm not supposed to go outside. Now, people ask me, what did I see as I went out, as I'm looking out the window? Honestly, I, I don't, 
I I saw maybe a light. I don't recall seeing any shapes or any orbs or anything because it as soon as I thought that I had that thought, um, they levitated me back into the middle of the room and set me down gently. They did not harm me. Um, I just got back up and just went back to bed. Um, I didn't have another experience until later on. And this time it was more like games. They would come into the room and um, they had these little things that would they would put in front of me, little shapes. Um, right. Most of them were triangular and I would have to put these little shapes into other shapes. And when I got it right, they would levitate around me. And um, I don't recall seeing any other children but myself and either two or three of these little blue children. Um, now, uh, now, were you sitting... Uh... How old were you, first of all, uh, at that point? I was three. Three, okay. So do you, I, I know I have some memories when I was a young child too, but, and it's hard yeah. for some for some folks, but do you remember, uh, if were you sitting on your floor or were you somewhere else? I believe I was somewhere else. Okay. Um, it seemed like a room of some kind um, because it wasn't my home. I knew I was not home, but I didn't feel afraid that I wasn't home. Right. Um, I I was just playing with these little blue kids with these shapes and levitating these shapes. Every time I got them right, they would levitate. Um, I I don't recall too much as far as what the room really looked like because I was sitting down like low on the ground with them. Okay. Um, it was just basically, to me, it was a game, and it was fun having them, and I thought everybody had them. I, I had no idea. Were they, they were. were they about as tall as you at the time? Because I know yeah. three years. Yeah, about, they about, were. About your height? Okay. Yeah. yeah, they were. They were like me. They looked like okay. little kids. They didn't, they, they didn't um, behave like grown-ups. They were very friendly, very kind, um, very gentle. Uh, very, right. very playful. Very playful. Um, so what, they never uh, hurt me. So we're talking about what, 1969? About that time you said. Um, I was born in 1963, so now I believe it's 1966. 66. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So um, now we have a person here. Uh, he's asking. You know, uh, his name is Jesus Estrada. He says. Uh, have you ever had nightmares or uh, after your experience for, and if you did, for how long? I did have nightmares. Um, I had nightmares when I was older, as an older person. Okay. Okay. And it, and it, it was, it was for like, maybe like four years after, um, because I, I thought that there was something wrong with me. Okay. Uh, did you, did your, you, was your sister in the room with you at the time or no? My older remember? sister, Naomi, yeah, she was there with me. Um, but I don't recall her being there with me when we were together with the okay. little blue children. Um, but yeah, she was in the same room with me. Um, mind you, we lived in Hartford. Um, later on, things started happening as I got older. Um, my second abduction that I could remember where I was actually taken, but I wasn't unawares. I I went to church. We had a church. My parents were pastors, and um, right. it was it was uh, September nineteen sixty nine. Um, very hot day. I went to church. We all had some sort of activity at church that day, and it was hot. I was tired. I went to bed, right. and I heard crying. I heard crying. So I'm just going back a little bit about my background. We had, I have an older brother who passed away, but he was an alcoholic and he was abusive. So there were times where there was crying in the home when he would punish my, my siblings or my cousins or his own child. And um, I, I, I was a little scared when I heard crying but I, I realized that there was more than just children crying. There were like grown ups moaning and like really like other other I heard other voices, like grown ups people. I opened my eyes and when I do I am 
I am surrounded by like, I don't know, maybe like five grays. I didn't know what they were. I was six years old. I mind you, I all, everything that I know, I learned from the Bible. So right. to me, it was very frightening. These big black eyes, they were, um, I was just talking about it. I, I, I get nervous. Um, they had these big black eyes and, and they were just looking at me and I was on this table thing. Um, I, I couldn't move. Um, I could, I could move my head a little bit and I could see, move my eyes, but I couldn't verbalize, you know, to leave me alone or anything. I was, I was just like really freaked out. Um, I tried to, I tried to, um, to fight back and I, I almost could move my hand, but the, one of the grays grabbed my hand and put it down. Um, I saw a boy, I saw this boy. And I heard him say to me, it's okay. It's going to be okay. But I'm wondering to myself, this boy is, you know, he's walking around and I'm on this table with, surrounded by these cucos. Um, cucos in Spanish to me is monsters. Right. And so I'm really scared. I'm, I'm totally terrified. I want to run, but I can't, I can't move or anything. Then suddenly I'm able to move. Um, I'm slipping down, but I believe that this, whatever I was laying on this table thing was like tilting, causing me to kind of like slip a little bit. And I tried to make myself heavy. I was scared. You know, when a child doesn't want to be taken, the first thing they do is drop to the ground and try to make themselves heavy. I tried that. I tried that, but I wasn't, I wasn't, gravity was not there. You weren't successful in that. No, uh, uh-huh. they were, I was like towed behind this one gray. And then there was like a taller gray and he was really scary looking, very muscular. Um, and it seemed like he was um, communicating with the other ones. Um, no, it's the appearance of these beings that really frightened me. Right. Um, I must say that they never, I never, I don't recall or remember them hurting me or putting anything inside of my body or anything like that. I do recall when I was laying on that table and I looked at myself, you know, I'm slipping and I could see part of myself. Um, Whatever this table is, um, you could actually see your whole insides. Like I could see like my veins, my bones. It was like an x-ray without an x-ray. I don't know how to explain it. Like, it made me look like one of those fish that you see in a fish tank that you could see all their stuff. Right. Their bones, like, everything. Right. Yeah, like that. And wow. um and 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 that that went itself really, really a lot. I want it off that table. It, it it really scared me. Um they scared me the most. It was just basically the appearance, but they let me this alien, this gray led me um to these there were like these like these holes, I don't know how to explain. Like, it looked like, like a cubby hole, kind of, right. but it was like built into the walls, and there were children there and people in there. As oh, I'm wow. going by, I see this girl, and she is so terrified. She's literally hugging her knees, and I, to me, I thought it was a woman. Um, it it, it was a woman, but I'm sure it was a young a young girl maybe yeah. a teenager, but I was only six to, to me, she was a lady. So right. her, when I looked at her, um, I, 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 I kind of panicked and I'm seeing these flashes, you know, there's this wall. It, when they put you in there, I don't know for how long, they, but whenever they want you out or whatever they do to you, they, there's a light that comes on. It's like a flash, like a strong blue flash. And, mm-hmm the people are gone. It, it makes them disappear. Oh, wow. So that scared me. Okay. I'm seeing this happening around me. I see this girl really terrified. I'm sure she sees exactly what I see. Right. And so, um, I'm on the wall and I see the boy again and the boy comes towards the wall and I try to move out of the wall, but I can't, there's like a barrier between me. I can't see the barrier, but it is there. Wow. Um, the boy tries to help me, but, he couldn't. The flash came and I found myself outside. Um, I 
I I saw these three grays um, get into this thing. I don't know what it was, but they got into this underneath this. I don't know how to explain it. It looked like some sort of a ray light thing, but like a tube of some sort. Okay. And they went into this tube. And as they went into the tube, suddenly the light comes off of me because there's a beam on me. I'm able to move. So I sit up and I feel like my whole, my clothes feel wet, moist, oh, like yeah. I've been in water or something. Right. My right. clothes felt wet, but I was scared um, because I knew, number one, I wasn't supposed to be outside. My parents were very protective. They monitored right. everything that we that we saw, that we did, everything. So I, w- I was scared to knock on the door. So I picked up some rocks and I threw it at the window the best I could till I got my sister to wake up, my sister Naomi. Wow. Um, she she tried to open the door, but my mom got to the door before I did. I had to explain to my dad the next day what happened. And, let me bring uh, this let me bring this to your to your little point here. I mean, um, so we have, I mean, I, I've, I've talked, I've, I've told stories about people that, have, that were abducted as children. Now, what I've noticed in my, in my research of, of folks that I do this with, uh, when they're children, they're not and under any under kind of paralysis whatsoever, they let them see everything, right? So they get to witness and see everything, um, and of course, you you saw other children there. You saw an older woman there, um, and then you you talk about being wet, your your clothes, your 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 hair, everything was wet. Now, of course, a lot of podcasts that I talk about, they when people say they're inside of these craft, it's humid in there. It's so humid. It's super humid in there. It's so wet in there that it's almost hard to breathe in a sense. That's how wet it is in there. So when you just brought that to my attention right now, it leads me to the fact that, you know, yes, you were there. I'm not going to doubt that one. You know, 100% you were there. And you probably were with the Grays uh, at the time. Um, you know, and, and, and a person here is asking, you know, do you think you were chosen uh, for that experience? I didn't find out what was happening until um, my last, not my last abduction, but my abduction when I was 24 years old. That's when I found out that um, that my family was chosen a long time ago, way before um, I was even born. Oh. I was I was told that by by the shining one. Let me ask you this. Um, do you believe that you and your family probably were abducted at one time or another? Do you have any stories of that? Yeah, um, my sister was abducted. Um, but at that point in time, I, I wasn't taken with her. I saw her taken. Um, and it was in the same place in Hartford, in the same bedroom. Um, it, there was a storm. Um, at this point, I think I'm nine. I'm nine. She's maybe, um, she's four years older than myself. So she's like 12 point up, 13, I think. And there was a storm and there's a lot of lightning. I'm, I'm scared of lightning and, and, you know, thunder. So, um, I see this, I asked my sister, you know, it's lightning. I'm scared. Can I please lay with you in the bed? And she said, no. And, you know, that upset me a little bit, but I just, you know, I laid there and, um, I see this flash uh, and I hear this loud thunder and the flash. So I, I didn't think it was anything. I think I didn't expect her to be gone or be taken. Uh, she was taken. I hear a bang and then I, I see the flash and it's right over her bed. And I'm, her bed was right in front of the, the, the window and mine was against the wall. So, um, when this flash came, she kind of, she just, she was gone. Now I'm freaking out. I'm scared. I don't know what to tell daddy and I, and mommy. I'm, I'm scared to tell them anything because of the way they reacted when, when, for me, when I was six. So I am scared. Wow. I don't know how much time went by, but a considerable amount of time went by. And suddenly the flash came back. The lightning, the flash came back, and she came back. But I saw a man. 
He looked like, I thought to me, he looked like Moses. He had long hair. He looked very human. But his the dre- way he was dressed, he was dressed like the people in, in scripture with like these robes. Yeah. He had a white robe with like a purple sash. He had long gray hair up to like about to here. He had a beard and a mustache. So my sister comes back and I says to her, Naomi, was that Moses? And she goes to me, and it was the scripture. So what else do I have as a reference? And she goes to me, she goes to me, no, it wasn't Moses. It was Jesus. I says to her, well, how do you know it was Jesus? To me, it looked like Moses. Yeah. And she said that when the man took her, Jesus came for her, that he asked her for her hand. And when she looked at his hand, he had a hole in his wrist. She said right here. She said that he had a hole right here and that it was Jesus. Wow. Now, I don't get into any detail or anything. I don't know why they did that, but I've also learned from um, joining other groups that these beings sometimes take the form of other or whatever you believe in or feel comfortable or safe with. Right, right. So I don't know if that's the case, but to me, I saw he looked like Moses. He looked like someone out of, out of another time. Yeah, uh, you know, I, it probably did manifest itself into something. In other words, so that way she wouldn't get scared, right? Because probably. if it if it looked if it looked horrible or it had big eyeballs or you know she gray would've... or she would have freaked out yeah. and then she would she would have came back screaming at you know when they brought yeah. her back. So maybe that's why it manifested its way, itself that way. Uh, I believe they can change their ways. They're they're interdimensional beings. I, I believe some of them are. You yeah. know, uh, I mean, yeah. uh, has, it, has anybody else in your family? Do you know of that? Yes. May have gone through something like that. Um. Yeah, my daughter. You daughter. see. Okay. I had no idea that this that this happens. I know that people get abducted because I'm an abductee. Okay, I know this happens, but I was unaware that it goes from one generation to the next generation to the next right. generation to the next. Now, mind you, my mom, she passed away in in um, 2013. She was two weeks away from being 90. My uh-huh. uncle right now is 85 years old. Now, when I was in my teens, I remember my uncle talking about these angels that would come to him. And I feel bad when I think about it. I love my family. Um, but I thought my uncle was crazy. <laughs> I, 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 I was joking about it with my cousin one day until I had my abduction when I was 24. Um, when I was 24, I was staying with my sister in Southington and um, she had this window and it was uh, from the, you know, from the ground to the ceiling. It was just the whole wall was a window. Okay. in her living room so I was sleeping on the couch and um this was 1989 on September and um I see this I I feel this light on my face so I open my eyes and I don't know I had been I must have been sleeping for quite some time I was very tired I really didn't think anything of the light I saw this light and I saw it was very bright I thought that it was my sister, one of my sister's, you know, friends. She had a friend that was in the military. He used to um, uh, repair helicopters, and um, he was in in the army, I guess, flying helicopters. And he would sometimes fly his helicopter uh, above the condo just to, you know, say hi and let us know he's around. And I thought it was him, but there was no noise. But I don't, you know, I didn't remember that until later on. But I turned away from the light, and I closed my eyes, um, I find myself outside. I'm outside and I'm next to this giant man. I mean, this man must have been maybe eight to nine feet tall. He was ex- was pale, wow. very, very pale. His head glowed though. It had like an aura, like, like he emitted light from inside of himself, but right. it wasn't, it wasn't blinding or anything. It was just like weird. 
And I, I, I swear, as I'm next to him, I see the height. I'm noticing that my head is like right by, like a little bit above his waist. Oh, wow. And his clothes, I could see his clothes. His clothes look like the night. It looked like I could see his head more than his body. Like his clothes made his body look like the night. I don't know how to wow. explain it. Like, you know, when thieves dress up to do something, they dress in black. But right. it wasn't it wasn't black because I took a close look at it because obviously my head is so close to his arm. It was very tight fitting. It looked like some sort of a ski suit. Okay. Yeah. But it had tiny little chip things in it it looked like crystals and it looked like they were moving i don't i don't know how to explain it like it was alive wow kind of weird wow. so yeah. he takes me to this um the wooded area behind the condos and there's a lot of trees um he he does something uh, he does something with his hand like he waves like that and suddenly this light opens up like a portal literally a portal opened up and I stepped through with him. It felt once I stepped through, everything was really silent. Everything went silent. There was no noise of any kind. And it seemed like I was in some sort of a huge warehouse. I don't know how to explain it to you, but it was huge. Wherever I was, it looked to me like like when you go into a hospital and you go into the basements and it's like really huge and big, but yeah. it's a huge warehouse and yeah. you can kind of hear the echoes, but kind of muffled yeah. like that. I'm behind this glowy head, eight foot tall, pale looking man. And I'm following him and I end up in the, like in this curvy corridor. Now everything looks like, like seamless, like smooth. Right. Um, I'm following him and I s start seeing light. Like everything starts lighting up in front of him. And to the right, I could see the, like windows. I don't know, some huge, giant window. And I could see crystals. But to my left, there's this huge floating crystal wall. This wall was, I don't know, maybe like, I don't know like maybe the two feet, almost two feet wide. Oh. And it was floating, literally floating. Nothing was holding this thing, nothing. And it kind of, you know, caught my attention, the, the floating wall. But then I'm looking and I see that next to the floating wall, like, I don't know, maybe like, I don't know, maybe 40 feet from this floating wall, there's a door. This door is a giant door. It's like one of those doors, like when you go visit Europe and you go and they got these places that they got these huge giant doors like right. that. Right. But, but it wasn't, it was the doors were like, they weren't closed. They were like this stacked. It was like doors between doors between doors. I don't know. That's what it looked like to me. So then I see this man come back, the glowy head man comes back to the wall and he waves his hand. He waves his hand on this wall. And that freaked me out because when once he did that, it seemed like the wall came alive. The wall started shooting out these balls of light. And I thought I was going to get burned because it looked like, you know, the sparkly things right, that right. kids have. Well, I step back, you know, I see these things coming and suddenly they start forming into these I don't know. It seemed to me like the solar systems, like different galaxies and star systems. But I got, I felt thirsty. I felt wow. like really dehydrated. I started feeling like really dehydrated, like I wanted water. So right. I, I thought about water and suddenly there's this other entity and I kind of drew him. I'm a terrible artist, but he looked kind of like a sea person. I don't know. He looked... His skin looked like a kind of like a jellyfish a little bit, like okay. a fish. But he looked like this. He had like a little mustache things on the side, like a you know, like a what do they call those fish that are in the, the that are in the like catfish? Yes, like a catfish. Okay. Like a catfish. He gave me a little vial, a little vial, 
and I drank the stuff that was in this vial. I once I drank it, like my thirst was completely gone. Wow. Um, I mean, literally, it was really bizarre. It made me feel. It made me feel really good, like, like, like strong and energized. Yeah, like you know, I have been like like a plant that has been that has never been watered and finally was watered like that. Wow. Like my thirst was completely quenched, but then I started hearing other voices. But I could only see two. Okay. I could see the 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 glowy head man and I see this the doctor guy, but then I look at this door and there's this light coming out of the door. I'm 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 getting nervous. I see this light. I don't know what's happening. I, I, I think it's the sun or something. It doesn't seem I didn't see a human figure. I saw a light coming towards me like the sun is coming towards you like that. It scared me. I thought it was it started taking shape as it got closer because I had to kind of like look down and I noticed that it had legs, a man's legs. They were huge. He was a giant. This person thing, whoever he was, which he's told me he was the shining one. He was, if I were to calculate how tall he was, I think he was maybe like 24, 25 foot tall. That's huge. That's big. His wow. feet were huge. I mean, huge. I thought it was God, to be honest wow. with you. I really thought I was in the presence of God. But I, as I, as he's coming towards me, I'm thinking to myself, oh, my God, what is this? It, what kind of a, what are you? I mean, are you an angel? What kind of an angel are you? A cherub, a seraphim? I mean, what are yeah. you? Right. And this is how he replied to me. He wasn't specific. This is what he said. He said, we have been called by many names throughout the centuries on earth. Wow. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, my God, am I dead? I'm dead. Right. And he says to me, no, you are not dead. But before that. Because as he approached me, I thought it was God. Really, I really did. Especially when I saw his giant feet. I mean, it, he was enormous. Right. Um, he told me not to kneel before him. I, I thought I'm dead. I'm dead. He says he's trying to convince me I'm not dead. He's trying to calm me. So he dims himself. As he's dimming himself for me, I can see his face. He has blue eyes with like silver stuff in it. I don't know how to explain it. His hair was completely white, but it shined. I don't know. It was like the light from inside of him. He was, he looked like a man, but a very, very giant man. Wow. Um, he, and this is what, he showed me. How, let me ask you this. How was, when you were there standing in front of him, did were, did you feel like your body was um, like, some people say that when they have that kind of presence or something that happens to them like that, that it feels like a, like a magnet that's been flipped back back uh, backwards you know how it has a pressure against it i felt they, they feel pressure I, did you feel i did not feel pressure at first i did at first as he's approaching me i don't know if it was the fear or what it was but there was a pressure but i felt when he dimmed himself and he started showing me things i felt that I didn't feel fear anymore i felt loved like like, like if I, like if it was my grandfather or somebody that in, in my family, basically, right, right. like a grandpa or you know an uncle, somebody that you respect, right, right. Um, and he showed me this place. I don't know how to describe it, and I do not know where he took me, but this place had crystals. It was. 
like I saw all these crystal structures. Some of them look like flowers, like uh, but it was crystals, like in shapes of flowers. But these were like like homes. They weren't like decorations or like you know something that you put out to these. These were structures. I mean, I believe people were living in these things. Oh, wow. Uh, everything was very pristine. The grass, the trees. It looked to me, I don't know how to explain it to you, but I don't know if you guys have seen that movie, Elysium. Yes. Like that. Yes. Okay. So do you think that you were maybe uh, inside of a, 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 maybe a large mothership to where it looks like they're living inside of there? I believe, yes. I believe they took me to some sort of mothership where they have, it's like a whole ecosystem. Ecosystem, yeah. Like it's, it's alive. Like it's alive. You know, yeah. and and they survive with that, and everybody is just kind of like a city in this in the in in the in space. You know, basically, what I mean? yes, and that's what they do. I mean, uh, what he showed me was he showed me like a whole bunch of different types of species of things. Uh, the wall that glows that throws out the little things. Yeah. Um, he could wave his hand on this wall, and this wall, I don't know how to explain it. Um, it would do things like it would bring things out of it, like make it like make it so like make it reality, like like in 3D right there in front of you. Wow. Um, he would bring I mean, everything that he was showing me seems so like like magic. Like, I, how could that just appear out of just this thin air? I mean, the things that he could do and the things that he was showing me, there's all kinds of there's all kinds of uh like uh, embryos of all types oh. of animals and and sea life and humans. Wow. Um, yeah. It is a huge facility and they have like many, it's like miles long, miles of all kinds of animals, people, all kinds of life. It's like a ark. Of some why, kind. Why do you? Why do you think that they, or chose you to see that? In other words, like uh, do I they... asked, why me? Yeah. And this is what he said to me. Basically, what he said to me is that they choose people and tribes, and they follow them and guide them throughout the centuries. They've been doing that since humanity, since the very beginning. Wow. You know, I. I believe that, you know, because I mean, you know, some people may think, you know, what you're saying is, is out of a sci-fi movie, like you said, or whatever, but it's not uh, because you experience these things as a child. That's the you, bad, you, yeah. You, you experienced it as a six-year-old. Now what we're looking here, we're looking at what, 1989, right? So, you know, years have passed, you're, you're a young adult and this, and you're standing before this giant, you got zapped away somewhere and don't know where you're at. Uh, but these things have been happening to you over the years. Now, you said your family, this happened to your family. It's been happening to your family over the years. Um, yeah, my uncle, my mother, myself, my daughter. And and I heard. I heard that that they they uh, you must have a really good bloodline that they like. I'm uh, a positive. I'm not no R negative or anything like that special. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's it's not the the blood type. It's it's you. <laughs> it, it's what you have inside you. In other words, your aura, uh, the kind of uh, persona you have. You know, your family lineage probably has something that that they're attracted to, right? And I think that's probably why they're they're showing you uh, what they're showing you. Um, you know, in, in your beginning of your life, and you're still going. Um, so they've you, saved you, me. They saved they? my life. Yeah. In the eighties, I was dating some really not very nice person, and um, he was very abusive. I was trying to get away from him, and I heard my mother's voice. I ran towards the voice, and she wasn't there. I managed to find a place to hide while my ex left the area and he was trying to kill me 
Oh, wow. And the, the, it was the star people because my mother wasn't there. My mother wasn't there. Wow. And it was, bef you... it was before, before I'm um, 89, it was 19, 19, uh, 1987 when, when I was dating that guy and they saved me. And literally, they made it sound like my mother's voice. The voice led me to safety. So he and didn't hear it. Was, it. Only you heard it? Only, only heard I it? heard it. Only I heard it. Um, only I heard my mother's voice and I ran to the voice. Wow. And I was able to to get away and save myself. Now, let's let's talk about the, the different side of this. Uh, I, I've heard you speak about uh, uh, reptilians and things like that. Oh, yeah. What? The Shining One showed me the reptilian. And this was really shocking because everything was fine. You know, everything. He showed me the crystal, this crystal city place. And he was showing me all the little these tiny little things where they kept these embryos and all these things. And suddenly um, he leads me to the, away from the wall into this middle area. And suddenly before me, uh, a reptile. I mean, it was so scary. Uh, okay. I didn't smell anything. People say that the reptilians stink. I don't know about that. Okay. I didn't smell yeah. nothing. What I saw was, uh, a snake man. His literally his head was like a snake like this. Okay. It he was about maybe if I were to guess his height was maybe nine, maybe nine, ten foot tall. Okay. He, he looked like um his skin was brown, but a little bit dark. But he was very muscular, very tall. He had clawed feet like uh like a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Oh, wow. um, but his chest was like, you know, the snakes, they have that, those ripple things. Yes. Like that. Scales. Um, yes. Those, those broad scales like that. Um, he had that. He had two legs like a man. He had a tail and two arms. He looked like a snake man, like a snake person, but more like a, like a lizard man. A lizard wow. man. And he told me that they were called the um, Nakash. And that the Nakash are the ones running our planet. And that freaked me out. I I said, well, I, I, I got to be dead. And now, now I'm in hell. I'm still in disbelief. I'm still trying to figure out what's happening to me. I'm still trying to make sense of everything that I'm seeing. Everything that I'm hearing in my head. Now... Right. After I drank the drink, um, there were other entities. There was a light being, another one, and this one was different. It was like, this one was like an interdimensional light being, and it was trying to manifest itself a little more to me. Um, it was so, I don't know how to explain it. I felt, I didn't feel fear, hurt, or harm from these other entities, I didn't feel any harm from even the reptilian. I felt fear from the way it looked. Okay, oh, wow. because he was very, very muscular. I don't think that one man alone would be able to take one of these things. Wow. Really. So, I mean, so when it was standing there, was it was, and it was in your presence, did it, did it, did it, it like, move? did it, it look didn't at you move? or anything? It was, I believe it was a hologram. Oh, okay. It was a hologram. So he's kind of showing you this is what's here. This is what's yes. on your planet. And this is what's running your planet right now. Yes. Uh, okay. I mean. But it was like you... life size. I mean, literally, it looked like it was right in front of me, but it wasn't moving. So it, like the others, the others that were around us, the other entities that were around us, they were moving and they were interacting. The, right. the reptilian was not. It was just like he was just there. Wow. Now, I know that you you were in contact, of course, with with Grays as well, and we're gonna we're gonna put that picture back up. Um, you know, uh, a lot of people always, you know, kind of talk about the Grays, and you showed us pictures of of what you saw. Yeah. Uh, yours were yours were blue color, right? You said uh, mm -hmm. sort of a bluish color. Yeah. Now, now. Um, 
when you were in there or during your past experiences, did you ever see any of these kind uh, that kind of look, you know, with the large heads, large eyes, kind of, you know, feel, uh, yeah, similar? I, um, yeah, similar. The the one next to your face, that one, the EBE, those, that's the one in 1969. Those are the ones that, that took me when I was a little girl. Oh, like Skinny These, Bob there. Yeah. yeah, Skinny Bob one. Now, now the one, the one with the grass behind them. Yeah. That one right there, these are the ones that come now. Those right there. Those so, are the ones that I've seen around around here in Florida. Those so that's right a, there. that's a totally different species right yeah, there. Yeah, uh, I don't know what they are, but they're here. They are. Um, now, you talked about, you know, you had an encounter. Um, your last encounter was in, what, 2000? Yeah, it was in 2000. Um, uh Mind you, we moved here to Florida from Connecticut um, to find a better life for myself and my children. I I basically just wanted to get out and go somewhere new. So we moved here to Florida, and um, we're here now. It's uh, 2000. I've, I'm working. It's 10 o'clock at night. I come right. home, and my son and my daughter are in the living room. And they're scared. You, you know, a parent knows when their kids are scared. They're kind of right. huddled together. You know, they're usually bickering one in one side of the room, the other one. They're, they're sitting together. What's happening? So my daughter says, Mom, go into your room. There's something I want you to see. So I open the door. And I look. And I don't see anything. So I says, well, what do you want me to see? She goes, Mom, you don't see anything in there? And I closed, you know, I closed the door and I said, no, I don't see anything in there. So she opens the door and she goes, look. And when she opened the door, there were these, there was this orb. It was about maybe this, like that. It was a white orb and it was bouncing from one side of the room to the other side of the room to the other. Now, I was like, what is that? Wow. Oh. <laughs> So I closed the door and I, I, we camped out in the living room that night. Yeah. So then a few nights go by, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, maybe like four, four days later, four, on the fourth night, um, I'm, my daughter and I are sleeping and I hear, uh, like this, mm, mm. So I opened my eyes and I went to turn my head, but I couldn't turn my head. I was frozen. I see this orb. There's an orb about that big blue orb floating above me and my daughter. Oh, wow. And I look, I look, and I see there's a, a gray next to her on her side. I look down to my feet. And I could see two more grays on my side of the bed and two more grays on her side of the bed. And then there's two more outside on this little porch area we have. Um, wow. wow. I, when I saw so many, it alarmed me. So suddenly I'm out. I asked my daughter what happened. And she said that when I went out, that the ball of light rose up above us, and as it rose, it got bigger, and the ceiling, I mean, literally, it went through the ceiling, and then she went she went dark. She doesn't know what happened after that. Wow. And, and this is why you're standing right there, or this is what she's telling you? This is what she's telling me. Oh, wow. So that's why when you got home, they were scared, sitting on the couch, you know, in a ball position, had, fetal yeah. position. They were both yeah. huddled together, like really, like really scared. And um, I really, I, I put it all out of my mind. Okay, I, I had that 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 abduction in '89. Now, now it's 2000. Right. And mind you, throughout that time, I've had other things happen to me before. Those are other things. Um, but. Those are a little bit more traumatic for me, so I don't right. really talk about those. But um, it it is I don't believe it's going to end. I believe that it is going to continue because what he told me, the shining one told me, was that they choose families and tribes and follow them throughout 
the centuries. It's like they've been doing this forever. There's really not... What I'm thankful for is that I, I've never been harmed. Um, sometimes Good. the things that they show me, I don't want to see. Right. Um, because it's alarming and scary. And I don't, I, I just, sometimes I just, I just don't want to see it. Uh, but, um, well, they, they do show a lot of apocalyptic things that are going to happen. They do. You know, and, they do. And, and it's, it, and it's, it's, I, yeah, it's, it's alarming. It's scary. Uh, but uh, the future is beautiful, I must say. Well, good. The I'm future, glad you, I'm the glad future you. is beautiful. Um, there, let me just tell everybody, and I'm sure everybody will be happy to hear this. There isn't going to be any more government. No. Oh, wow. wow. It's going to be out. Just nice. letting you know. Right on. I can take that. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, so th- uh, that way the IRS don't have to be hitting me up every every year, and right? No, it ain't going right. to work. It's not going to work anymore <laughs> on, on these uh, these things that they're doing now here on this on this planet too. Awesome. It's it's going to end. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, now, for the people that are watching right now, uh, Marisol uh, lives in Florida, so uh, she does have a lot of activity that happens out there. So she sent me a few photos that she has gotten a couple of craft up over her over her home, uh, and uh, I will go ahead and add those to the stream so you guys can check those out right now. So it doesn't look like much to you if you're looking at it. But the one on the left, there's a craft at the very top, right there by the uh, by the cloud. Now she zooms in on it, and you could tell uh, right there in the second photo that it's there's a craft there. And then uh, when you start looking at the other two photos, these are I think two separate times, correct? On these photos, mm-hmm, yes. Yeah. So on the and then the ones on the right, you're seeing the the craft way above the clouds uh and she's able to zoom in of course you know and then crop these out a little bit so she's able to to see these uh these crafts as they go by now you know usually somebody that has had a a lot of visual sightings especially abductees will have these visuals and they'll fly over all the freaking time all the freaking time uh and you know i don't know just just to keep watch or what's going on uh, because they want, you know, to see what's going on with you. Uh, but you also have a video here. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, so the, okay. So these photos first, let's go through this photo. So these photos, you, uh, this was what in 2019, you said? Mm-hmm. In 2019 and in 2017. Um, 2017. Okay. So, you know, there it's, it's been happening, right? And yeah. This is what you're catching above your home. Yeah. Now, uh, was this in the early mornings or are you catching these? Or okay. Evening? I usually would take pictures around morning, but it's the feeling. I don't know how to explain it to you. Okay. All right. I don't know what it is, but it's like a feeling. Um, Something just tells me to take pictures now. And I do. And they appear in my pictures. Wow. Okay. Um, sometimes I'm awakened from a deep sleep and I have like a urge to go outside. I go outside. Basically, that's what I do. If I wake up at one or whatever time I wake up and I hear that feeling or the voice, I call it the voice because it is like a a voice inside of me that tells me to go outside. So I go outside. Now I'm aware that I'm going outside. It's not like they do in a sci-fi movies where they're all like all tripping out and all in the days of some kind of zombie people, you know, they in another right. world. No, I'm lucid, I'm awake, and I'm aware of what's happening. I'm outside and they show up. I I I don't know how to explain it, but it's not a knowing. It's more like a feeling and a voice. Well, you know, um, the the mostly everyone that I interviewed uh, for this next film that's coming out, the, the middle part two, mostly every single person that I talked to and I asked that question. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I, I want to say every single one of them said it. They all said the same thing. It's like a feeling I get uh, to go outside and take a photo or take a video. Uh, it could be broad daylight. It could be at dark. It could be at dusk. Uh, and it's just at any time and anywhere, not just yeah. at home. It, it could be anywhere. And yeah, they my just daughters. Have, 
Everywhere yeah. I go, basically my brothers, my daughters, my uncles. I went to Puerto Rico and Puerto Rico also. I mean, um, yeah, they're everywhere. Wow. Well, let's let's show this quick video that you you sent me. Uh, that way, people can see what's going on. Uh, they won't be able to hear us, but it's just what's ever in the video. And we'll go ahead and play that right now, so you guys can see a little bit of a, of a craft that she caught growing uh, going over the sky. Okay, so here we go. All right, and that's no plane. Uh, it has no chemtrail. It has nothing like that. It's way up there. Uh, I do have one where it's zoomed in, but I, I thought this one was zoomed in, but it's okay. Um, you know, the, you, you the white thing. Yeah, that's what caught my eye. Basically, I was looking at the moon, and um, I saw this white thing falling. So I started videotaping, and my phone glitched a little bit, and I saw a a, a disc a black little disc come out from the right and fly up. So there's two different craft there. Wow. So there's actually two. Yes. Two in the video. Well, I guess we're, what we're going to do is we're going to analyze that with ASTP and we'll, yeah, please we'll, do. We'll, yeah, we are. We're going to, I'm going to send it to everybody. And that's what we do as a group together. Um, you know, you talked about your your family experiences. You talked about, you know, uh, your experiences as as being abducted as a child and seeing the things that you saw. I'm very vivid, very vivid. Uh, and it wasn't your imagination. And it's not anything like that. It's it's something that you went through. Um were you scared? Yes. You yeah. know, there was, there was points where you were scared. There yeah. was part, there was parts where they were giving you some kind of peace at, at, as well, you know, even your sister. So why they're coming to you, you know, throughout the years, throughout the generations, through the families, we don't know why they do that, but all we can do is speculate it just a little bit, you know, and know that it's for the good. It's not for the bad because they exactly. didn't harm me. No, they didn't. They didn't harm you. Uh, oh, I forgot to ask you: is, Have you ever gotten any kind of scoop marks, anything like that yeah, on your arms? Yeah, I've, got, I've gotten marks. Yes, I've gotten marks on my wrist when I was nineteen. Um, I had a. I thought I was pregnant. Um, I had an abduction, and I wasn't pregnant anymore. I had a. I had marks on my wrist, um, my knees, and my ankles. Oh wow. I had like small little tiny little red dots um, and one was in a shape like a, a circle with little triangle dots inside of it. I had one in the back of my neck, like right close to my ear. Um, I, it caused a, it caused an argument because um, the father of my children thought that it, he said it was hickeys. It wasn't hickeys. These are right. tiny little, little red dots and uh, in, in like perfect little shapes you know, hickeys, hickeys don't don't look like that. Yeah, they turn purple and then they yeah. you know, it takes a while it, for them to go away. It took like about a week for them to disappear. But um, yeah, I've wow. had marks. Well, I maybe they, you know, I've 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 done stories of this, you know, where they they take the the babies, they take the fetus, they take the eggs, you know, and then. Yeah. And then they end up uh, raising those uh, the children, yeah. and then they let they let you see them later. Um, I, I don't know, man. I've 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 just I've studied these stories, and and there's a lot of people think that that you know it's true that, that that you guys are full of crap, but you're not. You're not. You know, and that's the thing. You know, uh, people this, should know. I mean, children are they come to us when we're very young. And, and and not to believe a child or to think that uh, a person or a child is out of their mind or they're possessed or seeing demons, something's wrong with them, is wrong for society to do that. This is why I come out. I want to come out because children are the targets. They right. take us when we're young and they, it doesn't end. It keeps on going from generation to generation. If they still need something from you, they will come and get it. 
You're just no stopping them. There's not like, oh, please stop or any. You have no say whatsoever. None. Have you checked yourself for any kind of um, implant? No, I haven't, but I would like to. Do you ever feel like you maybe have any spots that's maybe hard, like maybe on your arm? On my hand. Your hand. Man. Sometimes there's a little there's a little thing in there. It's kind of made of metal, uh, uh, and it'll I don't be know what it is. But I got something there. Yeah, they, they they usually I mean, put I, it... you don't see anything. I, there's no bruise. There's nothing, but there's a lump under there. They usually put it like in a muscle area or around a nerve area. So, um, mm, and I, I, I do that on purpose is. because that's where everything kind of. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, energizes your body. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so I think they, they kind of keep, yes, and they keep track of you. Uh, and that's how they can control your your uh, your trauma, too, you know, of of, uh, of having that, uh, that paralysis. You know, a lot of people, they say they get the paralysis all the time. It's bad, yeah. The paralysis is bad. It's, I think the paralysis part of it is like the part that makes you, that makes your heart race. That's the part that makes your adrenaline go. Right, because you don't have your free will. Exactly, that's what it is. They took it from you, yeah. uh, and, and and that's the, the the part that you know everybody just. I mean, even I would freak out too, like that. You know, you know? I well, now yeah. that you say that, I'm thinking, I've always been paralyzed with the grays, but with the shining one, I wasn't. I was walking with them. I was free to move around. So, so you think? I think you're probably getting visited by two or two or three different kinds of entities. Uh, I am. We are. Yeah, because I mean, you're you have three different uh, three different kinds of of uh, encounters, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, what you're talking about, two of them are almost the same, but uh, the yeah. last. The last one of uh, the godly images, you know, that one was like profound, something that's almost prophetic, you know, something like that. You're going to, that you know that you're going to be okay. You're going to be fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, you know, that, that you felt great when it was happening. You, you, weren't, yeah. you weren't being harmed in any kind of no, way. No, not at all. Not at all. You know, and, uh, I, I just, you know, it's kind of hard to understand and how to, and to put together. You know, well, that's why. Um, this is why I started seeking out of out of um, into the UFO community because right. um, I was raised in a religious environment where right. you know they believe in demon possession and all kinds of stuff like that, um, and I I knew that. I knew and I believed in 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 scripture what, about the shining ones and the seraphims and stuff. But I didn't really really know because you know I wanted to believe. I did not right. know until 89. I realized that the shining ones are still alive and well and so are the watchers and they're still doing what they do. Yeah. And and they picked your family and they picked you. Uh yeah. you know you know and is it a good thing? I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know either. Um, I, know. I know that I know that um, when I've been in, like when I got C div twice, um, they have the capability of literally taking my consciousness and um, isolating me somehow. Whereas I, when I come back into my body, I'm able to heal. I I feel better and I'm stronger. I don't know how to explain it to you. It feels right. scary because it feels like my my soul is coming out of my body. It feels that way, like I'm dying. Yeah. And but well, in the process of when I'm coming back and I'm back in myself, um, the healing is rapid. It, I, I start healing immediately. It's like they take me, fix whatever it is, and put me back. It's and like it's, an ange- I don't know, like an angelic experience. Yes, almost, it almost is almost like that. Almost like that. Uh, I would pretty much say it that way. Uh, you know and. and if they're helping you, they're helping you, you know, and, yes. uh, because I, I know, you know, you know, not everybody is, is perfect and we have the perfect body as far as our health, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, we always, we all have issues. And if, th- if these entities are helping you in that sense to heal yourself of whatever issues you may have or our past uh, and they issues, have, which is really, uh, I, n- I never expected anything like that. I mean, I, 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 I to me, it was more like a, 
I don't, I don't know how to explain it. A miracle? Well, that's the best way to explain it. Um, and and you're starting to feel better, though. You said now. Yeah, I'm I'm fine. I'm great. I mean, and and I've got. I this is like was like the second time, but um, I've been through my kidney shut down when I was 25, um, and my life was saved at that point as well. Um, when I, I lost my hearing on my on my left ear, um, it's back. Um, it this happened wow. in 20 in 2019. I was sleeping and suddenly I heard a big bang, a louder than I usually hear it, and it woke me up and I realized that I could actually hear again in my left ear. So, um, oh. yeah, things like that. Wow. I mean, I've, I've heard of things like that, too. Actually, I there's a video out there of this, uh, this gentleman that he lost his whole voice. He couldn't talk. He talked. <gasps> That's the way he was speaking for a lot, many, many years. And... Um, you know, I guess he became a preacher or whatever. And uh, I, I don't know. But during one of his sermons, his talk, he starts, you know, his voice starts changing. You can hear it changing. And it's changing. And then finally he gets his voice back. Mm-hmm. And he, he had lost it for like 20 years or something like that. You know, he yeah. could speak. And, you know, if that if the, things like that happen to folks, I'm open to all of that. You know, because, you know, I, I just believe that if... if they're angelic or they're godly or anything like that. You know, I, I believe that, you know, they're there to help you. They're there to help you. You know, the misconception is with the godly and angelic thing is that people tend to think because of scripture, I believe, I don't know. But for myself, I'm speaking that angels are supposed to be good all the right. time and that they're there to just do good. Angels right. are just like human beings, which um, they have a job to do. Right. Um, if they have to dish out justice, that's exactly what they're going to do. They're not going to sway from that at all. Right. Um, if they're there to help you, they're there to help you. If you harm anyone that they're there to protect, you better watch out. Right on. Um, but they have never harmed me. They have shown me things. And yes, some of the things that they've shown me have been quite alarming and scary but they've also shown me beautiful things that the future holds for humanity good so there is hope i want people to know that these shining ones and the watchers are real they do exist and they're watching us all the time and that's a positive note you know Mm -hmm. it's it's not negativity it's a positive thing it's positive note you know i talked about my, my past podcast I just did on Enoch, you know, and the Nephilim and all that. That's mm-hmm. what they talked about, the watchers, you know, the, the shiny ones, you know, the, the the big angels, you know, giants, things like that. Of course, the giants were bad guys, but. Uh, Not all, but yeah, it's, they too. It's, it's there. And, and all yeah. it tells you in the book of Enoch, all it tells you is to be a good person through the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, basically, or else, yes. Um, or else. Or else. That's basically what it says through the whole book. Be yeah, a good person. I mean, life. I mean, all life on this planet is precious. I mean, um, it is very important. It is here for a reason. Um, mm-hmm. Everything that's happening um, to humanity right now um, is just a big uh, chaos. A lot of things are going to start coming into focus. And um, people just do right. Do good by yourselves and your families and friends. You know, don't do things that are going to condemn your soul. Yeah, you know, just be positive. Be a good person. Yeah. Be good, be good people. Be good to one another, man. That's, I preach that all the time on my show, you know, because yeah. I, I well, mean, I love, I love everybody and I love everything that everybody does, <laughs> you yeah. know, and, and, and I'm, I try to be so kind to everybody, but don't get me wrong. I'll get pissed off sometimes, you know, but. <laughs> I'm human, man. I'm just like you. I'm human being. But uh, is there anything else you would like to say before we uh, before we close out the show today? Um, no, basically, um, I want to thank all of you for your work and for joining me today and listening to my story. I want you to know that um, you're not crazy. Um, that the things that you are experiencing. Um, you're going to continue experiencing um, if it's something that's been happening to you since you were a child. Um, if you feel in any way threatened or or just say for them to stop, and I believe they will stop and they won't bother you anymore. Well, good. Uh, 
you know, and that's a that's a perfect way to close out, you know. Uh, and and Marisol, I just want to say, you know, thank you for being a part of of this podcast today because what you brought to the table, you you not just told your stories uh, that are incredible, but people get to understand the side of it and how it impacted you inside. You know what I mean? It's, it's yeah, inside. It's you know, it, 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 it's changed you. Uh, and you know, and this is this is how you know people should actually see this other side of extraterrestrial contact. It's not all bad, not all the time. No, so every not once all in a while, time. you'll get a good one every once in a while. And yes. you know, you were blessed to have the good one at the very end. You mm-hmm. know, uh, and to to kind of show you that you know the things are are going to change and things are going to be for the better for sure. Yes, but, it is. Thank you for being a part of uh, Alien Strand Disclosure Project team. Uh, you do represent Florida up there. So if anybody uh, sees anything up in the Florida area, give Marisol a call because her information is on ASDPUFO.com. Go there, ch- click on the representatives. You'll find her there. Marisol, thank you so much for being on You're the show welcome, today. welcome, guys. I appreciate you so much. Uh, we love you. And uh, we hope that, you know, you just keep on shining and and give, you know, more podcasts like these, you know, to other people so they can understand and, and it can be shared with everybody. Thanks again. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Have a good one. You too. All right, guys. Was that an incredible story or what? You know, stories, really, in reality, because everything she experienced was true and true to her heart, right? And she wanted to tell this story. Believe me, she had a hard time doing it. Before she went on uh, this podcast before mine, there was a few that she she did not want to come on. She didn't want to tell the story because she was afraid. You know, the stigmas that come with it, right? So remember that, that it's hard for folks to come out and talk about their experiences, but she had a, a couple of bad ones, one, one bad one, and, and the rest were pretty good. Uh, and she was able to explain it on the show today here on Alien Strand Podcast, you know, and I'm glad that you guys were sticking around. I'm glad that, that you guys were, were, you know, with me here, you know, the Lions Pride, we have Donna Sherman at Lyon. Uh, you know, we have we have a lot of people on here today that were just commenting, you know, Justin uh, Pinella, he was there you know we you know everybody was on there today you know uh, just giving their 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 thanks and everything and it was amazing thank you guys for your questions you know uh, i wanted her to tell her story i'm sorry to get to get too many questions in there but you know what i'm sure she's going to go back to this podcast you're going to see all the information and she's going to see it and she will answer your questions for you okay so before we leave, I just want to tell everybody, you know, this is going to be on an audio podcast, so be sure to share that. Uh, we're going to be on 26 platforms. You know, uh, don't forget to uh, follow us on Alien Strand, their disclosure project, man. This is our new badge. This is our new badge of honor, you know, for Alien Strand Disclosure Project. We created this, uh, and if you want to be part of Alien Strand Disclosure Project, hit us up there at asdp-ufo.com or go to a, our, our Facebook page, get me an a message, and say, hey, you want to be a representative? I'll be. I'll answer you a few questions. You'll answer a few questions for me, and then we'll get you on, okay? Be a representative. All you do is get all the information for, uh, from ufology or paranormal. We do everything there, man. And we are citizen ufologists. We do not work with government, anything like that, okay? Just a reminder, go check us out there. Check out our websites. You know, we all the information is there for you guys, you know. And we're here for you and to serve you. Remember that. And we will not scorn or, or look down on anybody that has had abductions or anything that happened, you know, that's happened in your past life or, or, or things that just happened, you know, uh, we are not going to look down on you. We're going to be here with you. We're going to stand with you and we're going to stand together with you. You know, even if you need somebody to hold your hand, we'll be there. We have people all over the United States. We have people in Australia, the United Kingdom, Africa. We have people everywhere now that will help you okay so thank you guys for listening to today's podcast i really appreciate each and every one of you uh like i said don't forget to follow us on uh youtube follow us here on facebook follow us on twitter we're live there as well thank you guys for for watching the show on twitter i really appreciate you guys uh please tell your folks about alien strand podcast we're gonna get more folks on you know and we're gonna we're gonna tell their stories we're gonna get more stories out there and there's more of us more people out there Again, I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, On behalf of me and Alien Strand Podcast, 
ASTP. You guys have yourselves a good day. Have yourselves a good evening. And have yourselves a good night. Executives, Coastal Band, and Corpus Christi, Texas. And you're listening to the Alien Strand Podcast with Donald Ledesma. Buying or selling, visit me at kellygreenrealtor.com or visit me on my Facebook page, Kelly Green Realtor. See you there.